Hey everybody, um, this is part two of our uh, lessons, <laughs> I related our lessons. So if you guys saw my other video about glaucoma, you can uh, check that out. But I figured I would go ahead and um, do one more video, okay, because I think this is important. Um, this is something that a lot of people take for granted and are very neglectful about, okay? And that is basically um, in contact lens care and hygiene, okay? So I do want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I guess we'll just label this contact lens basics. Now, if you don't wear contact lenses, then this doesn't really apply. But, um, it's good general basic knowledge, because even though you might not wear them, I'm sure you, you know, probably know somebody that does, because they are quite common these days. And a lot of people misuse their contact lenses in many, many different ways, okay? And I'll give you, like I said, some basics on just the use and the care and, you know, just some general information that you might want to know about contact lenses. So, let's go ahead and we'll start off by explaining what a contact lens is, okay? So we're going to draw the classic little schematic here of the eye. Because I'll remember this from my other videos. This right here is the cornea. Okay. This is the optic nerve. And the lens. And the anterior chamber. Okay, if you watch my other videos, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch over use some colored pencils. Okay. All right, now, um, basically, I want you, you folks, to understand that when you put a contact lens on your eye, what happens is it drapes over this structure right here, the cornea, okay? That's where it sits. That's where it settles, and um, it basically suctions, okay, right onto that structure, okay? Now, those of you who do wear contact lenses, you probably know that, um, you know, they're, they're typically very soft, very pliable, I'm almost wondering if I should show you one. I have some here. Um, this is just a sample. Okay. And it seems like the box is already opened. So I don't think it'll matter if I just go ahead and show you. Now, this is a particular brand that I don't really like anymore because it's not very breathable. And I'll explain why that's important in a moment. Uh, I used to be a big fan of this, but not anymore because there's better products out there. Okay, but let me go ahead and show you folks um, what a contact lens looks like. Okay, so this is the package, right? And when you open it up, you basically just do that. It's sitting in liquid. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and remove it just so I can show you what it looks like on your finger. Okay, so there you go. That's a contact lens. Okay. Now, um, you saw how pliable that was, how soft, how gentle I handled it. Okay. Well, it has to be pretty thin because the cornea is very sensitive 
uh, structure. Okay, it has a lot of nerve endings, all right? And if the contact lens did not fit appropriately, all right, you could end up with a lot of discomfort, okay? So that's the first thing, is to make sure that you have the proper fit, all right? And this is a very complicated process, how we get to this as doctors, how we fit an eye with a contact lens. There's a lot that goes into it, so don't take that for granted, all right? But I do want you to understand that not they're not one size fits all, okay? Contact lenses are medical devices. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that m one contact might not be able to fit, you know, several different people. They do, but they don't fit everybody. So, um, you do have to have them checked under the microscope by a doctor before the prescription is finalized. Now, a prescription consists of the power, the material, the base curve, and the diameter, all right? So, those of you who like to maybe, you know, pinch your pennies and order your contacts from 1-800 or whatever, please realize that these guys don't really care about you, okay? They are there to sell a product, so if something happens and you end up with an infection or whatever, the, the, you should have, you know, hopefully you have a good relationship with your eye doctor and you'll be able to tell them right away. But if, you know, you've ha you haven't had an eye exam in like two or three or four years because you don't think it's important, and in the meantime, 1-800-CONTEXT is dispensing the context to you without a valid prescription, that's very bad, okay? Because your eye can go through changes in the shape, all right? And if your eye changes shape in the meantime, how are you going to know if it's still fitting you properly unless somebody looks at you, okay? Let me talk about one of the biggest, um, you know, I guess you could say side effects or the, the most common things I see when people come in and they're wearing either um, old-fashioned contact lenses that were, you know, back in style, you know, like 15, 20 years ago, people are still walking around with those on, um, or they're abusing their contact lenses. Very, very commonly, you'll find people that are supposed to throw their contacts away every two weeks, and they throw them away every five weeks or every four weeks, okay? And you ask them why, and they say, well, because they were trying to save money or they feel fine, why should I throw them away? Well, it's basic hygiene, guys, okay? The more hygienic you are, the less risk of infection you'll have, okay? So let me get back to this so that you guys can understand that the cornea, I want you to understand, does not have blood vessels, okay? The cornea is made up of specifically laid out collagen fibrils. And they're laid out in such an organized fashion that you end up with a structure that looks like glass. The cornea is completely clear. And it is a vascular. Um, if you watched the previous video about glaucoma, you will have learned that the cornea gains a lot of its nutrients from the aqueous humor that flows through this chamber. That's the posterior cornea. The anterior cornea gets oxygen, oxygen directly from the air. And also, the second way it gets oxygen is from the tear foam. Okay? Now, what happens when you put a layer of plastic over that tissue? Well, sometimes not good things. When you put a layer of plastic over that tissue, you begin to suffocate the tissue, unless you have the proper material, which is breathable, okay? So imagine this being like a piece of fabric. Some of the old-fashioned materials that we had were like 
raincoat raincoat material some of the newer materials we have are like lace okay that's the difference right there if you guys are wearing i'll give you a uh, i'll give you i'm gonna go ahead and name a name brand because it's very popular if you're wearing something like AccuView 2 that's very old raincoat type material the lacy materials are the newer ones that are made of silicone hydrogel okay um brand names AccuView Oasis um Biofinity Air Optics Night and Day is actually the most breathable one. Um, those are some common brands that are available today. Okay, but even if you're wearing this category of lens, you're still not, you know, immune. <coughs> Excuse me, to having some complication. All right, now. What usually happens is people start to neglect the hygiene and their eye care because it's just, they don't think about it. They take it for granted. They don't think anybody, anything bad is ever going to happen. But what they don't realize is that every time you take out the contact lens, you expose it to the environment. You are now contaminating it with bacteria, mold spores, viruses, fungus, okay, amoebas, you name it, okay, a lot of different things are floating around in the environment that you don't necessarily realize. So the first thing is to always, always make sure that you wash your hands, okay? So let's do a do's and don'ts type list, okay? So make sure that you always wash your hands before you start to handle the lenses so okay so that's number one always wash your hands number two okay this might seem <laughs> like it's not very it doesn't make much sense okay but dry your hands in fact that may be even more important than washing them why you ask why it doesn't make much sense well the reason is because there is something called a can amoeba a c a n t h this is a hard one to spell <laughs> acanthamoeba okay and acanthamoeba is a single celled organism which can cause a acanthamoeba keratitis. Okay, if it gets onto your contact lens and it gains access into the eye, it can penetrate the corneal tissue. It can literally lay little eggs. The eggs are called trophozytes. Okay, if it lays those eggs into the tissue, you're in big trouble. Well, even if it if it gets into the tissue in the first place, you're in big trouble. This is one of the worst eye infections known to man. All right, it's very ugly. It causes a lot of pain. It can destroy your vision. You can end up blind. You might end up needing a corneal transplant. Even after you have a transplant, if it has laid eggs, the eggs can actually infect the new tissue, the donor tissue in the transplant. Um, it's very pesky. It, the, the medications that are used, um, I've heard from some people aren't even covered by insurance. I had one patient that had to pay $600 a month out of pocket. Um, he had to go all the way to Johns Hopkins. I mean, it was just a big commotion for him because, um, it's very, very hard to treat and you would have to go to a specialist. It's just, it's, it's just really, really ugly. Now, luckily it's not super super common okay so it's not like we see this every day but the bad part is that people who get this are usually contact lens wearers like a vast majority like 80 percent of people get who get this infection wear contact lenses and 
when I say dry your hands, why? Because tap water can contain acanthamoeba. Acanthamoeba is like everywhere where water is, is found, okay? Lakes, streams, hot tubs. Okay, that's a big one. Don't ever go into a hot tub with your contact lenses on. Swimming pools, even sea water. Tap water, it's all over your bathroom. Don't take your don't take a shower and splash water into your face with your contacts on because a canthamoeba can get in there. If you wash your hands and you don't dry them, the canthamoeba could be on your hands. Once you've dried them, you've you've manually you know sloughed it off. Okay, so it shouldn't be an issue. This is also why we tell people throw away your case every three months. If you want to be really diligent, do it every one to three months, okay? But don't ever keep a case for longer than three months. Guys, these things cost 99 cents, all right? You go to Walmart, you go to the um, contact lens area. They're anywhere from, I've seen them anywhere from like a dollar up to like three or four dollars, okay? So it doesn't make any sense to me for a $10 investment per year to not have a fresh case, okay? I've seen some nasty, nasty cases in my time. And I just, it just flabbergasts me how people can walk around and <laughs> put something that sits on their eye into such a dirty, disgusting looking case, but they do it. And I, I don't, I don't know why, but um, they do. So number one, wash your hands. Two, dry your hands. Three, throw away your case, you know, periodically. Number four, okay. If you wear the type of contact lenses that you're supposed to take out every day, Okay, which, by the way, you, you should. Okay, even if you wear extended wear, between me and you, stop. Okay, it's, it's, you're, you're very, very, um, you're increasing your risk 12-fold of getting a, a really nasty infection if you sleep with your contacts on. So if you ask me, I wouldn't sleep with your contacts on. Okay, but um, some people do it. Okay, they're just lazy or whatever. They just don't want to take them out. Um... And, you know, that's a personal choice, but almost every eye doctor will tell you that it's not the greatest idea, all right? But, um, anyways, so number four is to, um, clean. And when I say clean, rub. You guys, you just have to do it. You have to rub them, okay? If you just simply take them out of your eyeball, and just put them right into the case and put solution. You're not cleaning them. It's like washing the dishes. You just have to scrub off all the dirt. And if you let them sit overnight, the stains, the protein deposit, the mucus deposits, they just cement on the surface and they don't come off. You have to rub it right after it comes out of your eye. Okay. Um, not only will you get off all the deposits, you'll also get off the bacteria and the contaminants. Okay, so it's just good practice, good hygiene, and it'll keep you away from trouble if you do that step, all right? Now, um, the other thing that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of you guys won't think this is important, but your solution. Okay, a couple things about solution. Let's talk about that. Number one, no generics. <laughs> this, these are not good, okay? Generics are usually three, four generations behind the times, okay? Which means they're not going to kill off as effectively the bacteria. And the chemical, the preservatives that they use um, are just a lot harsher. They can cause a lot of dry eye issues, a lot of sloughing of the epithelium, a lot of, a lot of problems. So do not use generics. Think about it. They're cheap for a reason, okay? You get what you pay for in life. When you go to the drugstore and you're looking at... You know, side by side comparison, the Walmart brand is three dollars and fifty cents. The OptiFree brand is seven dollars and fifty cents. Why do you think you're? What do you think you're paying for? You're paying for new technology, all the research and development that went into studying that technology to giving you the best ingredients and the freshest possible and the latest technology um, in solutions. So, don't take that for granted either. That is important and. Um, if you really want to keep your eyes feeling fresh, clean, moisturized, 
um, don't use generics, okay? The other thing about solutions, and this is really one of my pet peeves, but um, people, again, people don't realize because they've never taken a class in microbiology, but um, how many times have we seen somebody come in and open up a, ca uh, a cap like this and do whatever and then just leave it there? Okay? You guys... Bacteria are in the air, right? Viruses are in the air. They're floating around when you speak, when you breathe, okay? You have to replace that cap because if you don't, now this is exposed all day long in your bathroom, your, your, your dirty bathroom, okay? I hate to say it like that, but it's the truth. And bacteria, you see that little hole right there? See that? Bacteria love to just stick right in that hole. And that means next time you go to use this, it's going to be contaminated. You could possibly get a big or a really bad infection. A few years back, uh, you guys may remember this, maybe not, there was a huge outbreak of Fusarium keratitis. And that was, Fusarium was a mold, spore, a mold that basically got onto the tips in the cases. People were doing really nasty things like um, a practice called topping off. Okay, topping off is essentially when you use your solution over like the next day like you never um you never dump it out you just squirt more in the in the case okay i don't know who in their right mind would ever do that but people do it that's what i'm trying to tell you guys that um <laughs> i have probably heard it all <laughs> anyways but um just try to be aware don't do stuff like that follow the instructions okay don't sleep with your contacts on clean them every night and throw them away on time because these are all the things these deposits they build up microscopically you don't know they're there but this is what bacteria love to stick to and i'd love to talk you know i could talk all day long about this um the video is already 22 minutes um you probably you guys probably want to get going but um you know i did want to give you just some basics about that um so remember, don't go swimming with your contacts on because of that acanthamoeba. Don't sleep with them on because you could end up with infections. And always wash your hands and dry your hands. And again, throw them away on time. And have an eye exam every year. This is starting to sound like an, uh, an eye doctor's commercial. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but, um, you know, just looking out for you guys uh, for your own good because that's what we're here for. And... Um, you know, again, if you have any questions and, um, you know, you want any advice or anything like that, just feel free to email me, message me. I'm going to leave it at that for now, and I'll talk to you guys later.